What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Bailey Kramer and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the differences and the pros and cons between short-term rentals and mid-term rentals. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first let's start off with short-term rentals. A short-term rental is essentially your classic Airbnb vacation rental where you rent out your property for typically two to seven nights. So let's talk about the pros of a short-term rental as an owner. Number one, you can make a lot of money. A lot of times, if you can have an Airbnb that fits a lot of people, they're willing to pay a good chunk of change for your property because their alternative is a hotel, which is oftentimes way more expensive. The second pro is that you can use your short-term rental for personal use. So let's just say you buy a property in one of your favorite markets that you want to visit, but you don't want it to really cost you money to have the property. You can rent it out on sites like Airbnb or Verbo and make money from the property while you're not using it. So while you can definitely make a ton of money from short-term rentals and have the bonus of using it for personal use, let's talk about the downsides. Probably the biggest downside that there is is that it is very management intensive. And I know this firsthand because I run Airbnbs in four different states and I have an Airbnb co-hosting business where I manage other people's Airbnbs. Even with systems and processes in place, we have checkouts basically on a weekly basis which means we have new guests coming in, we need to restock supplies, and it is a lot of work. The second biggest downside to owning a short-term rental is regulations. Regulations are always changing, and if you have properties in a market that no longer allow Airbnbs, you could get absolutely screwed. The third con I want to mention of owning short-term rentals is inconsistency in revenue. A lot of times, owners have super high seasons, they have super low seasons, which makes the overall revenue for the year not as predictable. Okay, so now let's move on and compare short-term rentals to mid-term rentals. So a mid-term rental is essentially a property that you'll rent out furnished for typically one month all the way to six months and even up to a year at a time. There's a lot of different demographics that you could possibly rent to, but I'll name out a couple. Number one could be traveling professionals like traveling nurses. The second could be insurance companies for families who lose their houses to fires or floods. Another target demographic is construction crews people relocating, and the list goes on and on. So let's start off with the pros of midterm rentals. The first pro is that these guests typically pay a premium. A lot of people think that short-term rentals are the best way to maximize revenue, but depending on the market and depending on the season, I've seen firsthand that midterm rentals have actually been the thing to allow me to maximize my revenue by targeting these guests who need a midterm place to stay. Which brings me to pro number two, which is consistency. Compared to short-term rentals, midterm rentals are way more consistent because you'll have somebody in your property for, like I said, one month, three months, six months. So you know that they're going to pay for all of those months. The third biggest pro is it is way less time intensive. Once a guest is in your property and they're going to stay for three or six months, they don't really bug you unless that they need you, just like a long-term rental would. So it makes the management process way less. And moving on to number four, is you don't have to worry about regulatory restrictions. Like I mentioned with the short-term rentals, regulations could change and short-term rentals could be banned. Mid-term rentals cannot be banned. Essentially, there's a lot of legislation right now already in place about stays that are less than 30 days, which is a short-term rental, but anything over 30 days is just lumped into technically long-term rentals. So there are no restrictions. All right, so let's talk about the cons of midterm rentals. The first con is that it takes work to get guests. With short-term rentals, you can just list it on Airbnb and you'll be good. With midterm rentals, that's not always the case. Yes, I've gotten plenty of bookings from Airbnb, but other platforms like Furnished Finder require you as the host to put in a little bit of extra work to find and get the clients. And because of that, you may have lower revenue than if you run it as a short-term rental. Now, again, for me, when I do midterm rentals, I am absolutely doing it to maximize revenue, but I have seen people who will do midterm rentals to take a little bit less money, but way more consistency than a short-term rental. And the third con for midterm rentals is a lot of the times, depending on exactly who your demographic is, a lot of people are booking last minute, which makes the uncertainty of bookings a lot higher. Now, if you know what you're doing and you have experience like myself, I don't get nervous about any vacancies. And I usually just fill them with short-term rentals anyways. But I've seen that hinder a lot of people from even getting into the space in the first place. So after running short-term rentals and mid-term rentals personally and owning both, I will tell you that right now, my favorite strategy is mid-term rentals. I'm making more money, I'm spending less time, and it is more stable. Now, I'm not knocking short-term rentals. I will definitely be buying more short-term rentals in the future, but I'll tell you right now, I am all in on mid-term rentals. 
So I'm curious to hear your guys' opinion down below. Which do you prefer, short-term rentals or mid-term rentals? And if you have any pros or cons that I missed, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.